Hello friends, my name is Jonathan. I am the first altar. I... I don't like that word. I was Wynne's first companion. When I came to her, she had no real understanding of faces or identity, so I had none. I was merely... a feeling. And as she grew, and I grew with her, that feeling developed into a voice. And I used that voice to guide her. When I first saw Wynne, I... When I first saw Wynne, I thought that she was the most beautiful child I had ever seen. And I wanted to spend my every waking moment teaching her that the world is a beautiful place and helping her to feel safe and happy. And so I came to her first as a feeling of safety and happiness. I developed a voice and with that voice I was able to play games with her and point out things in the world that maybe she wouldn't have noticed before. I was able to make her laugh and feel joy. And I was able to show her what it meant to give love and to receive love. And it was beautiful and she smiled so much. Over the years, others came, but I paid them no mind because, frankly, they weren't my concern. My concern was with Tiny Wynn and helping raise her. When she was four, though, something terrible happened. And I thought it was my fault. I was teaching her to trust and to love, but I wasn't teaching her the value of when not to trust and when not to give love. And so I ran away. I'd failed her and I ran deep into the headspace and was never going to come back again. Then when Wynne was five, my husband Jacob was made. He actively sought me out and lured me out of my hiding place and taught me that I was still a valuable asset to Wynne's life and that I could still help her. Uh, I just, needed help finding boundaries. And that's where he would join. And so we worked together and it was beautiful again. Jacob and I were able to guide Wynne, help her to feel happy and safe, but also help her to create boundaries. Jacob was able to give her a healthy sense of fear when she needed it to go away from something that was bad. And we worked as a team and it was amazing. When Wynne was in middle school, Jacob and I began to create dreamscapes for her. This was a whole new gift that we could give and we could create worlds where we shaped everything. We added specific dangers and specific safeties that allowed Wynne to practice being strong and confident. And we joined her in these dreams without telling her who we were in order to show her how to interact with people and what it meant to be respected by others, truly respected, so that she could expect that same behavior in her waking life. This whole while I was very much unaware of the rest of what was going on with the other companions. I knew that they were there but their comings and goings meant very little to me. When Wynne started to learn about the system, she very cleverly found Jacob and I um, in one of our dreams. She woke up and she questioned us and asked, are you altar? Are you an altar? And Jacob and I responded yes at the same time, which confused her quite a bit. But she was able to deduce then that it was two of us and she was able to hear our names and sense our presence. In order to help keep her safe, I have redirected my attention not just to win, but to the entire system because keeping us all safe and all happy and all strong is the best way to give those things to win also. So I've begun interacting with the children in the system and begun to help guide the memories to everyone at a safe and gentle pace so that no one has to be hurt again. It is my job to make sure that no one, no one gets hurt again, and I will do everything in my power to make sure that happens. I could say that I'm an altar without a face, which is relatively true, but Jacob holds that far more literally than I do. 
uh, as he doesn't have a physical form on the island. He's just this very smoky, shadowy man. Because I was born as a feeling, before Wynne had an understanding of identity, I can now take whatever form I please. And I have taken countless forms over her lifetime. Whatever it was that she needed most, that would calm her most, is what I became. Now, I stay the way that I am. When I created the island, I took on the identity of a Pacific Islander male because this child's movie created such comfort for Wynne and I wanted to give her a taste of that comfort every time she looked inside. I keep that presence now simply because I feel that if I were to switch too often, it would cause the system to become unstable and Wynne to become uncomfortable. So outside of the dreamscapes, the face that I wear is the face of an Islander. It will change one day, I'm sure, but it's no matter to me right now because I finally feel like I can fill my role and protect her in the way that I was meant to originally. Once again, after many, many years, she's seeing the world as a good place with good people and surrounding herself with that goodness and I'm overjoyed. I rarely come out in the body because I don't, I don't feel it's my place to interrupt her daily life. If she can live with joy, then I want her to live with joy. I don't want to take a single moment from her. I will sometimes co-front in the body, taking control of the hand and, and holding hers, letting her know that I'm still here and I'm still watching and I'm still caring and I'll never, ever, ever stop. That her happiness means the world to me and that will never change. She wanted so desperately for me to do this video and I was very uncomfortable with it because being in control of a physical body is not easy and it's not comfortable, but my comfort isn't really a concern. I wanted to fulfill this wish. Uh, unless when desperately wants me to be in another video, you will not be seeing me again. I don't want to interrupt her time, like I said, but I did want to give this introduction for her sake. I can't really think of anything else to say. So I'll bid you all farewell. I wish you all nothing but the best. Take care, friends. Take care.